Welcome to the Work Hard, Play Hard podcast. My name is Rob Murgatroyd, and I am a former doctor turned lifestyle entrepreneur. Each week, I interview some of the best minds on the planet on the science of achievement and the art of fulfillment. Today's episode is a mini-sode that we call Fried Dates with the Wife. In these mini-sodes, my wife Kim and I deconstruct the strategies that we've developed over the last decade to not only grow personally, but to turn our struggles into lessons and create fulfillment in all areas of our lives. Excuses are over. It's time to live. Let's dig into today's topic. All right, before we jump into this episode, I want to invite you to be considered for my Work Hard, Play Hard Mastermind by completing an application at workhardplayhardmastermind.com. So this mastermind is not like any mastermind you may have been to or heard of, I promise you. This mastermind is for six to seven figure entrepreneurs that are working too damn much and aren't taking the time to have amazing experiences around the world with an incredible tribe of people. So every 100 days or so, I drop you into new experiences that are specifically designed to elevate your thinking, to give you new ideas. Look, you get your best ideas not staring at a computer. And actually, this is the way high-level people really collaborate with each other. They do it over a glass of champagne, watching the sunset in the south of France. So if you are ready to do some fun stuff around the world and really, really want to level up your tribe in one shot, fill out an application at workhardplayhardmastermind.com. We'll jump on a call and we'll see if it's a good fit. All right, let's jump into today's episode. Kimberly Gardening Murgatroyd, how are you today? I am good. I was just out in the garden putting some soil in and don't know what I'm doing yet, but I'm trying. So for context for people, as if you give a shit about our garden, but let me tell you this. You know what? I'm going to tell you more people are going to have garden envy or be excited. Oh, really? Yeah. I did a post on Facebook and it is blowing up. Blowing up. All of my gardening friends giving me tips on what to plant, where to plant it, how to attract butterflies and bees and all that jazz. Good afternoon and welcome to The Gardening Show. Yeah, we're just going to change the show. My name is Skip. <laughs> okay, let me let me tell you something though. It's I a ver- play, I'm playing volleyball, beach volleyball, not just any volleyball, but beach volleyball. I'm now gardening and pretty sure I'm going to be homeschooling. What and, the hell is happening? And putting her crystals out when it's a full moon. And well, thank you, ladies that. and gentlemen, and welcome to the West Coast. <laughs> um, okay. But we are going all in <clears throat> well, listen, is what I'm saying. Here's what we're going to talk about today. We do not have a prepared topic per se, but I'm sort of like reluctantly dragging Kim into this conversation. And here's why. We have all been put through fucking COVID hell, if I can just say that. And those of us that are parents are dealing with the challenges of school. Yeah, if you're not a parent, you may not like just (laughs) scroll past this episode. (laughs) Yeah, this is not for you if you're not a parent. So if you have children, you have been put in the situation of having your kids in school, taking them out, putting them in, taking them out. And now here we are approaching a summer. We all hoped this thing would go away. It isn't going away. It is ramping up in terms of what, uh, in terms of closures and things like that. You get the idea. You're living in the same world that I'm living in. So we get an email today from the school that basically says, we don't know what the hell's going on, but be prepared to homeschool. So- Well, no, 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 no. Let me, because every homeschool mom just went, oh, no, you're not. There is a big difference between distance learning and homeschooling. And my homeschool moms will take massive, massive exception to that calling what we did for the last three months homeschooling. So there is a big difference. Yes, I agree. No need to send the email. But here's what we are moving forward. Not every state is feeling the way we are. First of all, we happen to be in California. Apparently, we're the state that's effing it up or or us, Florida, Texas, and there's probably a couple of others. But here's the problem. What we have going into the fall now is massive educational uncertainty. And I have a lot of feelings about 
you know, I want my kid to be safe, but I also want her to be able to see people smile, which you can't do through a mask. Now, keep in mind, she's five. So I think it's harder for little ones to like read lips or read eyes and they talk softly anyway. So how's the teacher going to hear? I'm like, I have all of these things plus the social distance. Have you ever tried to keep two five-year-olds that are excited to see each other away from each other? Like it's shit like this. Just, I I feel like the teacher is going to be going, Bobby, stop putting your mask on Timmy. Timmy, you can't pick your nose and eat it. Bobby, put your mask, take your mask out of your pants. Like I feel like the teacher is going to be doing this like stop it, stop it, stop it all day long that it's going to be useless for the two days that they might even go. All right. So what I wanted to broach today in today's uh, podcast is the idea of moving into a proper homeschooling situation. We Leaving public, moving into homeschooling. We have never been um, of the- of the home, variety. <laughs> home, homeschool variety. In fact, if I can be honest, and I'll speak for myself, I don't have to speak for you. I have had some serious trepidations of whether or not a homeschooled child is a fully well-rounded child. I have not personally- this is, please, if you're homeschooling your children, they're amazing, forgive this. But I have not personally found homeschooling children to be very well-rounded. Now that, now I haven't been a lot, of, I have not been around a lot of homeschool children. So it has turned me off personally to homeschooling. Just my experience, just what I've witnessed. Not a judgment, because I don't have a judgment around it. It's just been my experience. So I've always avoided it. But we ran into um, a, a friend uh, in the park, which is where I live my life these days because everything is closed. And um, we become friends with her. And she said, you know, look, I have a, a friend of a friend who's, uh, sh- you know, like a super homeschooler, right? Just uh, three su- kids, three been homeschooling kids and- 11 years knows all the things. So we did a Zoom uh, with her the other night and you know she she sort of laid out how she is approaching it. And she in very short order convinced me that you can create something that is truly spectacular for a child. So Kim and I are, are chomping at the bit to talk. So I'm gonna, well, I'll take well, a break. I want, before we move to that, I wanted to give a bit of background on how I felt about homeschooling because you know you you didn't really speak for me. Mine's a bit different. I have a a family, a long line of family members who are educators and teachers, and I've always kind of said like my mother and father went to college and got degrees to become teachers. How am I going to be any more or even closely qualified Mm -hmm. to them? And so I have one, I have this belief in my brain that how could I ever possibly teach Sophia through 18 years old, through high school about you know, physics, physics or anything. That was one thing. And then two, I feel this like pressure that my family is not necessarily putting on me because they don't even know, but I feel this like, I don't want to say shame or whatever, but I just feel like there's going to be judgment. But I mean, God, yeah, just well, look, they, throw it, it on the fucking pile at this point, I, well, right? Well, listen, it's just, <laughs> I, I tell you what it is, the same thing, you know, as a chiropractor, yeah. I found it very resentful when somebody was like, come here, let me snap your back. I'm like, dude, I'm a professional. Yeah. I know exactly what I'm doing. And <laughs> let I think- Let me walk on your spine and Right, make and it I, pop. Think, I think teachers are doing the same thing. They're like, look, we went to be educated to yeah. do this. Who are you to go do this? So I understand so, the judgment. But, so I feel like I'm going to have, have judgment, but I'm also like, I don't know how that I have the belief, but I do have friends. One of my really good friends, Stephanie, she has five children that she's homeschooled. God bless that and woman. Her kids are amazing. And so I don't have that fear that you have, Rob. I'm, I know you haven't met her kids, but they're amazing kids. And she does such a great job. And I watch her. I actually have met one. That I didn't, oh, I didn't you, know you she was Bianca. homeschooled. She's amazing. Yeah, she's amazing. So I, so anyway, you take the situation we're in where I'm looking going, okay, at best my kid is going back to school two days a week in a bubble mm. where she can't talk to any other kids in a mask and God knows what's gonna happen. And it's probably gonna get shut down again anyway. And then she's gonna do classes on Zoom, which is super effective at five years old. Or I can design a curriculum around what she loves to do. And so talking to this woman the other day, 
really helped me and talking to my friend Steph really helped me to see that there are options. And so if you're listening and you're, because I've had this conversation now with, I don't know, 10 of my mommy friends and I'm just kind of broaching, like letting them know, I think this is the road we're going to go down and everybody's got the same issues. I can't have my kid home 24 seven. I want them to be socialized. I don't know how to teach algebra. Like we all have the same problems. So I want to give you a couple of things that I learned that kind of made this easier. So the first thing is you don't have to teach everything. Okay. So that monkey can come off your back. Now, explain that. I'm about to. Things um, with COVID may not work out this way, but there are charter schools that have homeschool programs. And What's create, a charter school? I don't know, but it's it, just Google it. It's a it's a special school there. You can go. I, I have a friend that ha, her son goes to a charter school and they do in person classes, but the charter school also has a homeschool option where they provide a general curriculum. Every state is different, so I'm not going to give you specifics on what California does because you're going to just have to figure out what your state does but I can tell you what makes it easier. Finding a mom that's been doing it for a long time, getting in, or a dad, getting into a Facebook group for homeschoolers in your specific town, that has relieved so much pressure because I can scroll that. And this woman, this angel of a woman just posted a Google doc with 9 million free resources for children. Um, in all kinds of enrichment programs. And so I thought that was amazing. Okay, and, so I'm gonna keep interrupting you because yeah. there's some there's some things that I didn't understand, still don't understand, and you have a better handle of it. And I know people listening are saying, what are you talking about? Yeah. So you just said that there's a document with 9 million things of enrichment programs. Yeah. What is an enrichment so program? So think about this, right? When your kid goes to school, they have the norm. You, you're gonna teach, You know, they're gonna learn math, they're gonna learn reading, they're gonna learn writing, they're gonna learn English, they're gonna learn history. Read and write and arithmetic. All of them, right? They're gonna do that whole thing. But then there's also art and music and STEM program and science. STEM, like cell, cells? No, like, like hands-on learning. So you could set up a curriculum like Sophia, I'm gonna use her as my example, obsessed with science. That's our daughter for new listeners. Yes. She's five. She's obsessed with science. So during science, she can practice writing. She can practice reading. She can obviously get science there's math involved. There's all kinds of things that you can do doing projects that tackle a lot of subjects. Home economics, another one. You can teach um, how to measure and what look fractions are literally your measuring cups and your measuring spoons. So there are ways to incorporate hands-on learning in your home, if that's how you choose, for these enrichment programs. All right, so the first thing for me is when we did the call with that woman, one of the things that she said that really struck me, and that is that every hour, this is by by public schools' own admission, admission, every hour a child gets about 15 minutes of learning within that hour, because there's, you know, even if you have 10 kids in the class, you don't have a hundred. Um, there's only so much personalized attention that they can get. And there's so many different, you know, distractions and things going on, et cetera. So at best they're getting about 15 minutes. For each hour. Right. So now you got a kid in, in, in our case where she's in kindergarten and it's three hours, she's getting 45 minutes. Okay. Of education. So the question is, can you do better with those 45 minutes? And the answer to that question is, is obviously yes, you can do much better, much better than that. The second thing is, is her husband said, we did a call with both her and her husband and her husband said, look, you know, uh, he's a scientist by nature. I don't know what kind of scientist, but he said, he's a scientist. Can you do better with that 45 minutes Science that you're, dad. that you're getting dad there? Dad's a scientist. So dad's a scientist and dad says, thank you. Dad says, well, look, you know your kid. And what you're going to start to learn is how your kid learns. Do they learn auditorially? Do they learn visually? Do they learn kinesthetically? He said, we had a challenge with one of our kids. Wasn't, look, we thought he wasn't into books until we gave him some audiobooks. He can read. It's not that he can't read, but he's not consuming a massive amount because he prefers, as I do, to listen to audiobooks. So he's going through like a like hundred audiobooks or some insane number that he's consuming because he likes to consume it that way. 
So he's leaning in to how that particular kid likes to learn. He's also realizing, oh, wow, they're really, really into turtles. So we happen to live near the ocean. So we're going to go to an enrichment program that teaches them about turtles. And so instead of like the once a year trip to the aquarium that the school does, he's going to go and maybe spend two, three, four visits learning about what a stingray does or something like that. And so the idea is that you get to decide how you want to paint this palette. What do you want it to look like? Is it the palette that you paint or uh, is it the palette that does the painting? I think the palette has the paint on it. But, but that's you, okay. did you get the idea? Yes, I gotcha. I gotcha. I'm picking it up. So when you when I start talking about the um the charter schools, so they have charter schools, right, that can create your curriculum if you don't want to create the curriculum. There are enrichment programs. There's one here in the South Bay where you can your kid can go nine to three, two days a week. And it's basically school, but it's school for homeschoolers two days a week. And then the other three days, they do their enrichment programs and their homework from those classes and whatever else you have going on. So they'll teach the hard stuff for you. Or there's other um, things where you get kids around the same learning level in math. Now that could vary. You could have a seven-year-old and an 11-year-old that are on the same math level, right? Or the same reading level or the same history level. So it's not really done by grade. It's more done by where they're at. So you could get a group of kids together from these homeschool groups and hire a teacher to come in and teach advanced calculus to this particular group of kids and split the cost. So there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat. And what What I thought was me being home all day with Sophia, pulling my hair out and not, you know, really advancing her education turns out is completely the opposite. In fact, I feel like she's going to get so much more from it and be able to socialize and enjoy her life and learn in a way. I think the biggest thing is what you just said, learn in a way that suits your child because If there's so many, I mean, everybody knows standardized tests. Everybody has a complaint. Well, what if your kid doesn't test well? Well, there are kids that don't test well. There are kids that don't study well. There are kids that aren't interested in testing, but they're actually really smart. There's a lot of that. And there's also a lot of kids that don't learn the way the one teacher in the front of the room decided to teach math that year. Now, she also said, look, you know, so and a lot of questions that come up were, you know, what are you going to do, you know, when the kid goes to college? Well, first of all, you know, while it may sound like we are selling, you know, the homeschooling idea, this is all just something that we're excited about now because it's like literally, you know, 40, we're 48 hours into this and have not spent one day that we may do a day and go, fuck this. We ain't doing this anymore. <laughs> so I have no idea okay. how we're going to do with this. Who hasn't done any t- time in that? But what she said was, you know, let's take the gold standard. The gold standard for everybody is Harvard, right? Harvard, tell me if I got this right. Did she say that Harvard accepts more homeschoolers than anybody else? Yes. Which is really interesting to me because I would have thought like homeschoolers weren't even in Harvard. And the reason why I would have thought that is because of exactly what you just said. The reason you get into colleges is because you do really, really well on things like SATs. So you've learned how to rig the system to create, you know, great grades. It doesn't necessarily mean you're well-rounded. It just means you took Kaplan and you got really good at it, right? So, and and so I wonder, you know, like, you know, in the long term, if somebody's homeschooled, how does that work out? Do they, you know, do they take these standardized tests? But but for us, she's in kindergarten, right? So I don't want to put the, the cart before the horse. Did I get that one right? Right. But back to college though, real quick. Some things that she said that colleges will have you do is create a portfolio of their work and show how well-rounded they truly are. So you can test math and you can test all of those things, but most college applications now are not into that. Like her son, she, her oldest son is like 12 and he runs like three businesses on the side. You're going to tell me some entrepreneurial kid that's been in business, quote unquote, since he was 12 years old, isn't going to have a really stunning application into college. He will, because he's going to learn all of the other things too, but he's going to have, he has more time to develop to other things. So it's kind of like, 
if your kid is interested in business and like Sophia is asking me every day for a freaking lemonade stand so she can make money. This girl wants to make money. She, if you say the word shit, if she heard our podcast, we'd owe her a hundred bucks every time we had a podcast because every word we say, that's a bad word. She makes us give her money. This girl is entrepreneurial. So what if in a few years, we decide to take some entrepreneur enrichment classes or do some other things? Like you have time to do those things. Now, one more thing I'm gonna say, we have set our life up to have time to do this. The reason that I went into network marketing, the reason that Rob wanted to get out of chiropractic and the traditional job, quote unquote, is because we wanted time freedom, time freedom to make choices like this. And I realize if you're an employee in a company and you work nine to five, the thought of it's not possible. You're you're going, who's going to be home with a kid? So I get that right now you're probably going, yeah, but I have a job or yeah, but whatever. But understand that just like you can create a life for your child if you choose to do this, you can also create a life for yourself. You can reverse engineer any goal that you have. So if this is something that is interesting to you or or you're passionate about or even looking into, look for options that allow you to work from home. Look into, take a serious look into network marketing because it's not 1982 anymore with Uncle Louie bringing paper. It's a legitimate business that can bring in a legitimate income. Look into so many companies are now offering work from home options. Like I see that this is an obstacle, but the obstacle is the way, right? So if this is something you want, there is a way to make it happen. Two things just hit me. If you're Harvard, let's go back to Harvard and then I'm gonna go back to the point that you were just making. If you're Harvard and you're looking at a kid who starts with a lemonade stand and then goes on to other entrepreneurial endeavors, and as the kid gets older, is learning about things by being there. So they're in Machu Picchu, as an example, and they spent you know two weeks learning about whatever they do over there in Machu Picchu, right? Versus the kid that has been sitting in PS4 49 in Queens, as I did, you know, for eight hours drooling because Mrs. Rangold is going on and on and on about God knows what with George Washington. (laughs) This is so much more interesting. That's number one. Number two is you just made me think of something that I never thought of. We have fought so freaking hard to be able to create time and money freedom so that we can go where we want, when we want, with whomever we want, et cetera, right? And then we lock ourselves into a school system. And then we lock ourselves in because the and school- And if we want to do six months because here- Because we have months. everything we do, we're free, we're untethered. But if I say, oh, there's a great- flight to Rome or there's a party they're doing, they're crushing, they're crushing grapes in Rome now. And we got a great flight and a friend is going to comp a hotel for us or whatever, right? The first thing you're going to say is, Sophia's got school. What do you want me to do? Now we go, wait a second. Let's teach a lesson in Italy. Let's teach her how to make wine. Enrichment program. <laughs> this is a, I never thought of this. Yeah. This is a great idea. I love and this. So you and I have been, here's the thing. And by the way, if you're still listening to this, <laughs> there's probably three people. Of course they're listening. You know why yeah. they're listening? Because they're feeling the, they're feeling excitement. the excitement in our voices. Well, let me say this. You and I have been nonstop talking about six months in California, six mm. months in Italy. We wouldn't be able to do that for Ever. 13 more years, yeah, we can do it now. All right, so we are talking a very good game right now and we're talking <laughs> about how excited we are at homeschooling and you may find out that we enrolled her in public school tomorrow. <laughs> so please um, know that we are a work in progress. We are, uh, what we do, a lot of people are very complimentary um, on our unique relationship and how we work with each other. And one of the things that we do is when we get excited about something, we just talk about it and we go back and forth looking at every angle, we get excited. And as long as it can continues to feel good, then we'll generally go in that direction. And right now we are learning that it's feeling good. And I'll leave you with this. We were super excited about this. And then I said to Kim, well, 
why don't you put her, put her in school two days a week and we'll homeschool three days. And I watched her metaphorical penis shrink. And she was okay, like- I don't have a penis. I know, but it's you a, meta, want, it's about, a metaphorical. How about, how about you watched my- my aura dim. Okay, whatever. Okay? If like, you, you choose your- I don't, don't you put a could, penis on me. You choose whatever, whatever. I don't need any more appendages. Okay, listen, we watched it. We, we, we watched it, her, uh, her, her chi uh, dim, her light dim a little bit. She was like, eh, doesn't feel good. And then we said, okay, we're gonna do homeschooling. And then I ran into somebody this afternoon and there's a private school here. And I told her about this private school that goes nine to three and it's a Montessori school. And she was in Montessori school and we should consider doing Montessori. And then I watched the chi, the lights dim again. And so I was like, you know what? Number one, I need to shut the fuck up. And number uh, agreed. Number two, she is, I, I can, I know my wife and I can watch what lights her up and what isn't lighting her up. And right now there is something inside of her that is getting excited about the possibility of doing this. So we're gonna chase that rabbit down and we're gonna see where this thing leads. I don't know where it's gonna go, but we're gonna see but where listen, this thing leads. If you're a homeschool parent and you have resources, send them to me. Yeah, hook us up. <laughs> hook me That's up. it, everybody. I hope that helped any of you who are considering doing this. We don't know what the fuck we're talking about, but there you have it. Our honest, unvarnished opinion and truth. Have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks for listening. If you love this episode and you know someone that needs some help in either stepping up their work hard game or their play hard game, it would mean the world to me if you shared this podcast with them to help me get this movement out there. So if you like what you heard, head on over to iTunes, take 30 seconds and leave me a five star review and I will be forever grateful. So until the next episode, excuses are over. It's time to live.